So uh, that was a tune that they did, they wrote, and this is one of mine. Uh, it's entitled Little Boy Dance. It's, uh, I have a strong connection with the music of New Orleans and, and the islands, and, um, and uh, this is that and a little something else, too. So, um, Thank you. 
And uh, this is a song that was written by Bram, a beautiful ballad entitled The Rock Beneath the Tree.
Oh, oh, oh. 
Next we have a song I write I wrote entitled Heart Song. Thank 
let me take a moment to say that first of all, thank you, Tom and uh, Will and everybody here at, uh, at the, the famous pop shop for having us. This is, I think, my fifth or sixth time playing here, something like that. Beautiful mm -hmm. audience, thank you all for coming out. And uh, definitely uh, someplace I just always look forward to coming to, you know. And, um, and uh, I should announce that, uh, well, this band was formed uh, in, uh, well, really, Keith and I did some gigs together in Ottawa in December of uh, 2019, and we got this idea of doing more stuff like that. And um, maybe we'll show, play a little of that song that we played together, where we barnstormed a duet. It was like a, a <laughs> soprano sax and guitar, and then we walk in with a baritone sax and a tuba at, a, at an art gallery yes. and said, "Oh, could we play?" And, and uh, they were invited. <laughs> yeah, we were invited, but but the walls weren't ready for what we were, what we were coming in with. Um, anyway, we that was where the idea was born from, and, and later on, you know, I played with Graham and knew how brilliant he was, and and really uh, thought he'd be a perfect guy. Plus, we were able to record at his studio, but not for not when we intended, because we had booked a session for March 17th. What's today, the 15th? Yeah, yeah. March 17th, 2020. Yeah. And as I mentioned, Keith lives in Canada. And uh, then on March 13th, 2020, this thing happened where we were all just going to take two weeks and wait for this whole COVID thing to blow over. Remember that? Yeah. And um, and uh, that took a little longer than two weeks, and the border was closed, so we just kept kicking back ideas of songs, and now we've got lots of songs, 20 or 30 songs, but never got a chance to get together and play. And then finally, in maybe it was June or uh, 2022, or something like that, we uh, we were able to, uh, the borders were open, and we were able to, to make a plan to meet at Brown's studio for three days. The yeah. first night we got there, we just tested the microphones and we recorded that tune, which is on our CD, which I'm getting to. And then um, and then the, the next day we did a lot of songs, way more songs than we could fit on the CD. And then we had one more day of the studio and we woke up the next morning and Brad was like, guys, I tested positive for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I was like, well, see you later. <laughs> yeah. So it ain't been easy, folks, and, and uh, but and, none of them got it, which was great, because so again, vaccines. Yeah, we we had an, an album's worth of material, and then we, uh, Graham and I, got together and mixed them, and uh, Bram's got it, this wonderful label called uh, Semper Viren, and and uh, and uh, he he's got a few recordings on that label now, and uh, this was the first, and uh, so it was self-titled album, Tubari, and uh, we released it on CD and on digital platforms and we do have copies of the CD here somewhere right, right, here. right there by the water right yeah yeah that's good I like, I like the fact that it's by the water <laughs> and that, mm -hmm. that sounds healthy um, <laughs> so uh, yeah and we're just excited to get another chance to, to go back in the studio and finish the second record which is already half done but we just keep writing more songs but but tonight at least for the next two songs we're playing the album in its entirety and uh, in order, I might add. So if you listen, if you buy the CD and you listen to it, it should sound familiar. The solos are different. <laughs> the tempos are different. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are looking at me like, really? You want to do it that tempo? I was like, yeah. I thought you were going to do it twice. As That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. And Surprise. Yeah. I didn't want to. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't know about the <laughs> and. Uh, at any rate, so so this next tune is called The Quickening, and it's a song that I wrote. It's kind of a, a, a round <coughs> for the horn players. And I just, I keep choking here, so let me just take a sip of water before we get this started, because it's a lot of straight through playing, and it really features Bram on the drums. So, um, you can count your money in your pocket and see if you can buy that CD for $15. I think that's what it is, right? $15? Um, we had stickers, we're out of stickers. We sold out of t-shirts today, but if you want a t-shirt, it's a really cool design, and, and um, I think uh, Tom or somebody here might be able to show you on the sticker what it looks like, but it's, it's a beautiful t-shirt. We have them in all sizes, mm -hmm. and you can contact them, and we can mail them to you um, for a uh, very low shipping cost. Um, anyway, I'm gonna try to play this tune on the, 
the miniature saxophone here. <laughs> and, uh, this is, uh, well, it's not, it's not brand new. It's from about 1920, but it's new to me. And uh, I'm just learning how to play this sucker. Um, but it's a saxophone. Really right? um, totally owned by a very big person. Yeah. It doesn't fit in my car. <laughs> so I had to file for an extension. Um, <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
the quickening. All right. Woo-hoo. This has got a little bit of brand in it too. This is a song of mine titled Beautiful Gift.
That's the album. <laughs> 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 cut for cut. Yep. Classic album. <laughs> what would you like to play now, fellas? Fellas. I want to try Brahms too. Let's try Brahms. Okay, yeah. so here's a song we've never played before. Appropriately titled. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
song that I wrote uh, in tribute to uh, Howard Johnson. And, uh, you know, among many other things, I, I mean, I like to say, you probably might want to say something too, but, but Howard was, uh, <clears throat> to me, the art tatum of the tuba. Yeah. Um, because he just picked up the instrument and played it in a way that nobody imagined was possible to play it. And, um, and then in addition to that, and, and defied really the physics of the instrument, and that inspires folks like, like Keith to, to play the way that he does, which is, which is you might agree with me, they're quite amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and uh, but in addition to that, he was a virtuoso baritone saxophone player, played all around the world, like I said, played bass, penny whistle, uh, all kinds of stuff. He played with everybody that you could possibly name, including the fact that he was the original the guy who hired all the band members and created, helped to create the music that is that Saturday Night Live sound. But he played with Charles Mingus, he played with Miles Davis, he played with, you know, everybody, My, Max Roach, everybody from his generation and many generations, Paul Simon, James Taylor, those of you who grew up on Sesame Street, remember Jelly Man Kelly? <laughs> yeah. With James Taylor and a tuba player? Guess who the tuba player was? Um, 
Howard. So uh, this kind of like soul gospel jazz thing, Not we're not talking smooth jazz, but we're talking like <laughs> real soul and real gospel. Okay, we're in a, we're in a jazz record store, right? So, <laughs> so um, when, when Howard, you know, he also played with the band and he wrote a lot of the arrangements that we're familiar with, the horn arrangements from the last waltz, right? So, um, but then years later, I'm playing with Levon and then Howard came and started playing with us and I was thrilled because he's a hero of mine and he invented that style of music. And um, people would say to me, oh, that, that Howard Johnson guy is pretty good too. And I'd be like, no, <laughs> if it wasn't for Howard, there would be no me um, or any of this kind of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, But Howard was like, he, he liked to be the baritone saxophone player. And uh, and he, and we'd play two barriers together and it would, I thought it would sound great. And he'd say, Eric, uh, you sound so good on the alto. Why do you want to play the baritone? And I'm like, come on, Howard. Like, I, I think it sounds great. And then little by little, he warmed up, but like not in front of everybody. Uh, I'd, take a, you know, I'd take a solo on the wait, and he'd send me an email the next day. He would say, oh, nice solo on the wait, Eric. And, and I'd write him back immediately and say, thanks, Howard. Where do I send the commission check? <laughs> and he'd write back to me, uh, oh, well, you know, and this is where we started warming up to each other. <laughs> I mean, I loved him from the beginning, but but um, but he'd say, well, uh, I sold mine to the estate of uh, Cecil Payne and, and to David Fathead Newman, who was still alive at the time. So uh, that's kind of like tells you where Howard was coming from, but not everywhere that he went. So uh, at any rate, with that, we're going to close tonight. And thank you all for coming uh, so much. And and um, uh, I'm not going to stick around long because I got a long drive. We have to drive back to Pittsburgh tonight, but these guys will be here. And they'll stay here all night if you want and, and uh, <laughs> sign autographs and, and tell you bad stories about me. And and uh, and uh, but I really, really, truly want to thank you. It means so much to us that we can put this um, special music together that we love for ourselves and for people to come out and gi give it a try and listen to it. And, and um, can't tell you in the universe as an artist what that means to us. So thank you so much. And especially thank you to Tom and everybody here at the Pop Because I, I call him and I say, Tom, I got this thing. And, and he's just like, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> and um, you know, let's find a date. And, and, uh, and Keith was, was here in the States and had a visa. And, and, we, and we, we thought, oh, great. You know, we'll have two gigs in New York, uh, Brooklyn and then Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Nyack, you know, so like I, you know, I'm an upstate New Yorker too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. That's like saying that anything uh, west of Boston is western Massachusetts, you know, it's, and it is, you know, but anyway, I digress. Let me go back to playing music. I do it better. Um, here it goes. Uh, love your neighbor.